Hello and welcome back to the Tin Boy. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in this week's video I think we're probably going to conclude the series on the uh, toe jacks. Uh, I do want to say again how much I really appreciate all the views, the comments, the thumbs up, just the positive response to the first two videos in this series. Of course in the first video what we did was uh, prepare the, uh, the jack itself to get it ready. And then in the second video, we assembled all the parts and made the, uh, and actually made and demonstrated the toe jack. In that second video, I did say that uh, uh, I was going to think about and requested some comments on how to make a handle for this. Uh, as I pointed out, you can't lift it by this, uh, do you leave the jack behind? And as it is, it's awkward to pick up, uh, requiring two hands. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I was recording that video, I hadn't, had not made a decision yet on how I was going to make the handle. But by the time it was published, I had already uh, made the handle for one of the jacks. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that off camera for right now. But many of you suggested the same thing I came up with. I guess some of us uh, had kind of the same mindset on this. Uh, one person did suggest to uh, screw this out, to screw it out, drill a hole through this, and then mount the uh, screw pin. But for whatever reason, this one seems to be locked in. I had thought about doing that beginning at the beginning and actually putting a slit in here before I decided to mount the jack down. But that won't come up or come out without taking the jack apart and I'm not interested in doing that. But kind of the consensus of a simple handle was to drill a hole through here and put something like this PTO pin in place. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to carry it one step further though, instead of just picking it up by this uh, once we get it pinned, I'm going to put an eye bolt in the top of it. Then stick with me. We're going to put open up another eye bolt to make a hook out of it and put it through the handle. Stick with me. It'll all come together in the end. Now, I did have several comments folks wanted to know why I uh, replaced or why I put the knob on here. Why not just use the handle uh, to loosen and tighten that? Which is a good possibility, would be a good possibility. Remember on the other jack, I turned that to the side for tight locations. But the problem with depending on the handle is that handles get lost. Uh, as far as the jacking part, if this handle was to get lost, the jacking part, heck, you can use a screwdriver if you needed to, to do that part. So I took, I put the handle on here, the knob on, in the event that the handle gets lost. But another thing we're going to do at the end of this video, and I know this is a long introduction, bear with me. Another thing we're going to do at the end of this video is make tool storage, a place to store these handles, uh, what we're going to do is mill or uh, turn on the lathe a couple pieces of stock, the smaller one, mount it to the plate where this can set over it, and on the back side we'll do the same thing with a little, little larger stock and mount a, a stud up there for this handle to, to, to mount on. But for now, let's turn to the lathe and get this hole drilled. We're going to drill a hole for this PTO pin. Then up here in the void area where the, uh, the internal, internal post doesn't reach to, we're going to drill another hole just to have a place to store this pin when it's not in use. Before we turn to the mill, what I've gone ahead and done was about six inches from the top of the uh, base plate, I marked a hole in the center. This will go all the way through both pieces. 
and then at nine and a half inches marked another hole just for the storage hole. We don't need the jack on it while we're doing this, so we'll we'll take that off, save a little bit of weight. Alright, now let's get this these two pieces set up on the uh, on the mill. Okay, I got you <clears throat> up top now looking down on the mill. And to get this set in, what I'm going to have to do is get a little bit creative on use of some parallels and spacers. This little block down here is just a sacrificial block that I'm going to set the uh, set the jack on. And the reason I'm using this, the space between the well joints on the uh, toe and the heel are not as wide as the jaw. So I've got spacing out on each side here. And let's get that tightened down in there. Alright, now I should be able to simply slide the base in. And what I'm going to do, just to be sure the base don't uh, don't slide off of this upright, I want to keep them in line, keep them aligned in the bottom bottomed out position. I'm going to put this little clamp. All right, that should keep that from moving. And I'm going to drill this with a uh, 1764. The PTO pin I've got is quarter inch, but I want just a little bit of, of play in there so I don't have to struggle to find that hole. So we're going to drill this first hole where we marked it down here. Tell you what, before we get too far down, let's, uh, let's set a zero, an approximate zero on our z-axis DRO. And that total thickness, I should be able to tell when I get to the uh, sacrificial piece under there. That's an inch and a half. But, uh, don't want to drill into my vise. Alright, we should be getting into the sacrificial piece now. Yep, just went through. Alright, so now we're going to move down here. And again, this second hole is just somewhere to store the pin when the jack's in use. Okay, now I'm going to get set up to drill and tap a hole in the top up here uh, for the eye bolt. Okay, now let's get set up to put our eye bolt in the top. I've marked out where I want it to be. Doing a little experiment with it all put together, it seems this center on the heel right here is about as close to the center of gravity as I could find. So we'll use a couple of toe clamps here. And we'll just Use a toe clamp on the appropriate toe to hold it down. And that gives me just enough clearance for the tap drill of a quarter twenty. What I'm going to need to do right there, since I, when I ground this off, uh, it was a bit of a slant there, I'm going to stick an end mill in the uh, in my chuck lock the table down right here 
I'm going to stick an end mill in right quick and get a flat surface. Or nearly I wouldn't wouldn't put an <coughs> end mill in the chuck, but just to get a flat surface here, I think it'll be okay. Okay, that's doing much better. And since this is a blind hole, I'm going to go ahead and drill it down pretty deep. Now we'll insert the bottom tap. All right, now I'm going to get set up to uh, drill a through hole in the handle. Okay, I've got the large part of the handle mounted in the vise. I uh, got it centered on the Y and on the X axis. <laughs> For this hole, I'm going to drill a quarter inch, and it will go all the way through. Okay, let's turn back to the bench now. I think we have the handle part complete, but we do want to, uh, to work on the handle storage. All right, to go through the handle, I've got another eye bolt here. Uh, we're going to open this up just a little bit to make kind of a a hook out of it instead of an eye. And of course all I'm doing is using a, a cold chisel here. And we've got it opened up some now. Up here in the top of the uh, jack where we uh, drilled and tapped that hole, I'm going to put a little thread lock in. Okay, now in the handle, we'll clean up the burrs a little bit. And on this eye bolt we straighten out, we'll, we'll run one of the nuts all the way to the, to the top. A little thread lock on it as well. And I want to turn this hook we made at 90 degrees to the handle. Alright, we can install our PTO pin. Of course, if the jack was sitting up here, I won't screw it down just yet. But then our hook just simply and you know guys I'm going to weigh this for you when it's all said and done. Uh, I won't leave you till the next video to guess what the weight is. But if you got a thought right now go ahead and drop a comment down there what you think this uh, jack half inch steel plate the solid upright the tube the whole jack Give me an idea what you think it weighs. Okay. Now what we want to do, even though we've prepared for handle loss by putting a knob on, we want to lay out somewhere to actually store these handles. And what I, like I said, what I'm going to do is put a post on each side of this made out of some aluminum to, uh, uh, for these just to set down over. Again, what that second hole is for is just somewhere to store the pin when I'm actually using the jack. Alright, so that's three and a half inches. Excuse me for reaching over you. Just make a note of that. 3.5 from the toe and from each edge. Let's see where it looks like a good place for that to be. About halfway between the well joint and the edge, which is two inches, so we'll come in one inch from the outside edge. 
these holes need to be drilled and tapped as well. And instead of using the uh, uh, long drill bit over on the drill press to do that, we still have to tap it from the bottom side. We're going to go ahead and set this up in the mill like this and drill and tap with it set up. So let's get that done. Back at the mill now, and I've got our platform set in, our base set in upside down. And even though the holes are going to be drilled in line, <coughs> excuse me, with this upright, I still don't trust this setup all that all that much. So what we're going to do is set some a couple of large parallels over here, uh, a couple of uh, blocks. One, two, three blocks was the term that left me there for just a second. And then we'll put this jack under here. And to level it, this is not critical enough to try to run an indicator on it. But what I'm going to do is use my uh, angle cube here, zero it out on here. There's zero. All right, let's tighten down a good. All right, that stays at zero. And we said three and a half inches from the toe, from the toe edge, and one inch in from the side. And this, of course, will be the tap drill for the quarter 20. And it's short enough, I shouldn't have to uh, run the center drill in. Zero out the X and Y axis right here, so that'll be easy enough to come back to. At this plate, it's six inches, which it was roughly six inches. This should be, the RO should come to about four inches here. Now we can come back to zero on our DRO. All right, now let's turn to the lathe and uh, get the post made that will will mount on this uh, what will be the top side. All right, I got you in a little bit of a bird's eye view over the lathe now. We're going to take this smaller stock, which let's see what it is now. Uh, five eighths. We're going to turn that down to about about a half inch just so that small handle fits over it. We'll zero out the z-axis there. Come in two inches is what we want to turn down. And put just a witness mark. Then we'll come to two and a half inches, which is where we're going to part it off. And put another witness mark. Now, since there was right much, uh, since this was only a 5 8 diameter piece, and I've got oh, two and a half, about three and a quarter inches sticking out, I'm just going to make a spring pass at that setting because I'm sure the, the workpiece was springing just a little bit. Don't know whether the camera's picking up, but it's probably taking, at that end down there, it was probably taking. Two to three thousandths off, and it's just barely shaving up here where it's a little bit stiffer. Just fine. All right. I'm going to chamfer this edge right here just a little bit. 
And I also want to dress up this end some, round it off. So what I'm going to do is take the 60 degree insert first. Pretty steady or pretty strong chamfer on that. Then we'll take this uh, piece of high speed steel that I've just ground a, about a quarter inch radius on. Alright, now I think we're ready to part this one off. Tell you what, before we part it, let's clean it up just a little bit. And I know from past experience, if I don't put something down there, when that piece parts off, it's going down in the drink and I'll have to fish, fish it out. Now we're going to turn this piece around in the lathe and drill and tap it for the quarter twenty. Alright, now we're going to do the same thing to the larger piece. Okay, I'm going to take these two parts over to the parts washer, degrease them, clean them up, and put a coat of paint on them. Then we'll be ready to come back and put the uh, jack back together. Alright, I think our paint has had time to dry on our two pieces. What I've done in the, uh, get these out of the way for right now. <clears throat> in the two holes that we drilled with the base upside down, I uh, put a couple one inch long uh, quarter twenty set screws in. I used a little thread lock on them, and I'll do the same thing uh, with our tool holders, handle holders, I'm sorry. This was going right behind where the handle will actually be used. As you can see in the other jack over here, uh, with the jack with the bottle jack turned 90 degrees, I mounted the two holders over here. Did the uh, did the handle the same way, where you can simply hook it, pick it up. Now that we got this one. I'll put the large handle behind the. Uh, the area that will be used, the jack part that will be used primarily. Okay, maybe the jacks aren't getting lost in this sea of red and black back here. 
But let's bring the scale down. One last time. If you want to make a guess, stick it down in the comments. That one weighs 23 pounds, which is about 11 kilograms. The other one should be the same thing, but we'll, we'll test it out just to see. That one's right on 24 pounds. Which again, 24 is about 11 kilograms, thereabouts. I think I'm done with the two uh, toe jacks now. Uh, got somewhere to store, store the handles. Got a way to lock them together. Uh, I believe they'll be a good addition to the uh, tin barn. In the upcoming video, my what I have planned for my next video, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I made these two jacks out of recycled material, basically. Uh, I had to buy the steel plate for the base. But... Uh, as you saw in the previous video, this uh, tube and sleeve, uh, or upright and sleeve, and the toe and the heel were all recycled pieces. In the next video, I'm going to uh, try to recycle a lot more material. I have another farm implement that uh, is just not used in uh, 21st century farming, uh, and I'm... I don't have any land that I'm tending for farming anyhow. So I'll give you the whole story on it next week. Here's a, here's a quick picture of it. Uh, but there's a lot of, lot of flat bar in there that I can use. And as a matter of fact, there are six half inch thick steel plates that I could have used for these bases right here had I recycled that material first. Again, I appreciate all the views, the comments, a thumbs up, all the reactions uh, to this series on the uh, uh, bottle jack or on the toe jacks. I really enjoyed this build. You guys take care and I'll see you on the next video.